Hello everyone and thank you for joining me today. Uh, today we're going to chat about topic 11. You have been able to access this video lecture because you found the course notes related to topic 11 and I've clicked on the link to get you to this YouTube channel, um, pardon me, YouTube video. So before we proceed, please make sure you don download this set of course notes to your device of choice. Don't just rely on being able to access it through Brightspace. You never know when you'll lose access to Brightspace. Today's topic is access to exits. So we're going to look at specifically portions of section 3.3 in the building code. Uh, so let's get started. What we did in the last topic, which was topic 10, is look at the difference between three sets of terms. Okay? We looked at the difference between exits, access to exits and means of egress. Today's topic would be access to exit, which is under section 3.3. Uh, last topic that we covered, we looked a little bit about exit signs. And normally, uh, right now, if we were in person, we would chat a bit more about exit signs, uh, just to prompt you to see some bad examples of exit signs. Uh, what I provided here on the on the screen is a link to some examples of bad exit signs. So what I'm going to do is maybe along the top I'll get it to scroll a card that provides the link to this uh, link or maybe in the description below and we'll give you examples of some bad exit signs. So this is an example of what not to do because we chatted a little bit about last topic how important exit signs are. So let's get started. This is how section 3.3 really is set up in the building code. Uh, and you want to flip through the building code right now, right? You're doing that. Section 3.3, if you're at the right one, it's called safety within floor areas. Okay? And it's all about accessing exits, getting to an exit. And the way it's set up is that under all of these subsections, okay, it, it accounts for different types of floor occupancies. So subsection 1, so that's 3.3.1, is all about all types of floors. Okay. However, once you start looking at certain specific types of floors, you have to look at different sections. So for example, assembly is under 3.3.2, uh, care and detention 3.3.3, and so on, up until you get to 3.3.6, which is design of hazardous, hazardous areas. So that's probably more like your F2, F3. Okay. All right. Uh, the way this is set up on Brightspace is as usual, but what I've done for you on Brightspace is I've also included two drawings that reflect our ACE building. Okay? Drawing A020 and drawing A021. If these drawings look familiar to you, they're on Brightspace right now, wherever you found this set of course notes, is because I also put them up there for you when we chatted about topic 7. Okay? So I would recommend, if you can, download these drawings on your device of choice so you can refer to them and see how our, our own ACE building also sort of addresses some of the topics we'll be covering today in Topic 11. Um, and before we jump into Topic 11, I also want to mention that there's a lot to cover for Topic 11 and as such it will be broken down into multiple videos including the last video where I chat a little bit about test one. I should also mention this video has been prepared before test one written by you, I would assume has been written and submitted, so, but uh, I'll, I want to kind of cover it as well nonetheless uh, in a later part of this set of videos. So this is what we're looking at, okay? This is an image that you saw from topic 10 it's a floor area of some sort. There's a number of suites labeled suite A through C, uh, G. Okay, So that's seven suites. And uh, what we're covering with, sub, uh, with section 3.3, access to exits, is what the building code says needs to be done in a floor area for everything up to but not including the exit itself. Now we're going to talk more about exits in topics in topic 12. Okay? So for example, specifically what I'm talking about as a reminder of what we did in topic 10, access to exits covers the floor area that is not exits. Okay? So 
the exits here in these drawings are what are going to be highlighted in white, right? Just the stairways. Everything else that you see here in red counts as access to exit. So it's everywhere on the floor up to, but not including, the exit. So for example, let's say you're in suite C and you want to get to an exit. Section 3.3 covers all the safety requirements to get you from being in suite C anywhere in suite C through the doors and the public corridor and through an exit. Make sense? That's what we're covering today. Okay? All right. So the first thing is if you're in suite C, right, is uh, you need to make sure that the suite itself is safe. So we need to look at how suite C, or any other suite in a floor that you're in, is separated from all the other suites. I guess then a question is, what is the definition of the building code for the term suite? If you go and look it up, the word suite is italicized in the building code, which means that it has a definition in a specific spot in the building code under Division A. But you know this by now, right? So go look up the definition of suite so that you have a better understanding of what suite is according to the building code. What the building code basically says under this sentence, 3.3.1.1, sentence 1, is that unless it's a de-occupancies, the walls between suites not only must be fire separations, but they must also have a fire rating, an FRR, of one hour. Unless, under sentence 2, uh, the fire rating can be reduced to 45 minutes if the requirements of sentence 2 are satisfied. So go check them out, please. And furthermore, you're allowed to have no fire rating for these fire separations if the requirements of sentence 3 are satisfied. So you want to make sure, just like you have so far, go check out what the building code says about this. Go read it. Very well. Uh, so once you're out of suite C, okay, and you want to make it to an exit, you're going through a public corridor. What is a public corridor? Well, the building code defines it loosely, because you're going to read the definition for this, as a corridor, a hallway, if you will, that serves multiple suites. Okay? So go check out what the building code defines as a public corridor. Now, what the building code says under these sentences is that a fire separation is required. And don't forget, what is a fire separation? We cover this, so go find that, but it's also defined for you in the building code. Okay, it's a continuous closure of some sort. Okay. Now, unless the exemptions in sentences 2, 3, and 4 are found, a fire separation is required as the walls of your corridor, right? The fire separation, then, under sentence 2, must have a fire rating of 45 minutes if it meets the requirements of sentence 2. A fire separation is allowed to not have a fire rating for a corridor if the requirements of sentence 3 are satisfied. And under sentence 4, no fire separation and no fire rating is allowed if the requirements of sentence 4 are met. Okay? So, this here um, is important, I think, because it begs the, begs the question, are the walls between the classrooms and the ACE building, on the, you know, on the tower portion of the ACE building, and the corridors, the public corridors in the ACE building, are they fire rated? So go check out in drawing A020 and in drawing A021 whether or not these walls, the public corridor walls, are fire rated because it has to do with the distance from anywhere in that room to the nearest fire exit. And see what you find, okay? Are they fire rated? What do you think? I would think they would be, right? But, go find out, okay? Uh, which brings us to, then, as a clause to this sentence uh, that basically says that uh, if the floor area is sprinklered, kind of like in the ACE building, no fire separation and no fire rating is required between a public corridor and the public washroom 
as long as the public washroom and the corridor are separated from the remainder of the story. So kind of in one of or the other of these two sketches that I show for you on the screen and in your course notes. So make sure you read this. Okay? Is this what they have for the ACE building? Go find out. Okay. Now, once we go through a suite to make it into a public corridor, we have to go through a door. And a door in the building code must have the same equivalent amount of protection, must offer the same amount of protection as the wall it's in. Okay. Uh, so basically, the fire protection rating of a closure must meet certain requirements. Enclosure is basically what the building code calls doors, right, windows, that kind of thing. Where do you find the definition of closure? By now you know, so go read it, please. But here's what the building code says about the fire rating of a closure for a wall. It basically says, first, check to see if that closure, so for now let's think like a door from a classroom in the ACE building into the public corridor, is it allowed to be a 20 minute door, a fire rating of 20 minutes? And you find that out under this sentence, 3.1.8.10.1. If it's not allowed to be 20 minutes, then you must go to table 3.1.8.4 and find out what the fire rating of that door is based on the fire rating of the wall. Check out this table. You'll see it's very simple set up very simply. On one column it has the fire rating of walls and once you find the fire rating of the wall that you're looking at you just go across and find the fire rating of the closure. Now one thing that I want to point out is the terminology fire protection rating. Why is it that for a closure it's not called a fire resistance rating as we have for walls, floors, roofs? That's because the terminology for closure is different. You'll find, in fact, that typically, not always, but typically, closures are allowed to be a smaller fire rating than the wall they're in. Okay? So, be careful. When we talk about fire resistance rating, it's walls, floors, roofs, ceilings. When we talk about fire protection rating, FPR, it's for closures only. Okay. So then, when it comes to closures, uh, the, the process is basically this. It's very simple. First, for any closure, to find its rating, you have to check to see whether or not it's allowed to be 20 minutes. And this is where you find it in this sentence. If the answer is yes, great, you're done. You know what the fire rating of that closure is. If the answer is no, because the closure does not meet the requirements of this sentence in the building code, well then, you have to go to table 3.1.8.4 and figure, it out, figure out the fire rating there. Okay, These are the steps you need to take, but they're relatively simple and you're practicing in the homework. Now I want to show you how important closures are for the purposes of stopping the spread of fire by showing you a residential property. Okay, It's a video that I found online and it's linked for you in the references that will appear shortly. But look at this, this is a residential property and we're walking through it and you can see how there has been a fairly devastating fire, right? There is no more roof. And it looks like a big, nice house, right? Big fireplace, open concept, and there is a closed door, so a closure. And we open this closure and look at that. The bedroom is really untouched. And that's only because that door was closed. And that, as a residential property, likely doesn't have a fire rated door, okay? or at least it doesn't need to have typically a fire rated door. So look at how little it takes to stop the spread of fire, right? A closed door. And there's a very interesting example for Ottawa about how one closed door saved the library at the Parliament buildings. Okay? I link that more in your course notes, so check it out. I also provide an extra link of uh, some examples online that I found of how important an actual fire rated door is to stopping the spread of fire. Normally I'd go over it with you live, 
But in this situation, what I'm going to do is, right now I'm going to try to scroll along the top a card with this link, or if that doesn't work, I'll put it for you linked in the description. Very well. Uh, when it comes then to fire separations and closures, there's also these other requirements that I'm putting for you on the screen. They're listed for you, maybe discussed a little more in your course notes. You will check these out, of course, like you have so far with everything else related to our course. Okay. And now, uh, I think this is the right place to take a quick break because the next item we're going to talk about is going to be public corridors and the minimum wick with the public corridors. Uh, so thank you for your time. Let's take a quick break and we'll come back and chat about public corridors.